Today is my mom day. Come along for our nighttime routine. You're the best helper ever. Oh, that's so kind of you. Cheers, cheers. Such dreams await, Olivia. Do you and Izzy ever fight? What does a disagreement look like? Everybody is a little bit cringe when they start, you know, shooting for their dreams and actually making moves. I just had this big breakthrough, if you will. Hello, and welcome back to another vlog. If you're new here, my name is Sabrina. Today is my mom day. <laughs> I've kind of designated two days for work and two days to just like be a mom and that doesn't mean I don't work on my mom days like I might film a vlog but I'm not going to edit this until a work day um but we're just going to go about our business it is already pretty late because it's 3 26 and I figured I would take you along for our nighttime routine what do you think yeah. If you've been here for a while, you know the girls were sleeping in our room last June and we were like on project to get the girls out of our bed. And they're out of our bed. Let's they sleep it. They sleep in their own bed. They put themselves to sleep. We just kind of tuck them in, read them books, all the things. They fall asleep on their own and this one still wakes up in the middle of the night, right? Are you picking your nose? <laughs> she wakes up in the middle of the night and she just like calls for me or Izzy to resettle her. But we're working on it, right? You're learning. Yeah? Are you going to sleep in your bed all night tonight without calling mommy or dad? No? <laughs> I'm going to try my best. Yeah, you not. should. Okay, you'll try your best. Come along for our nighttime routine. Say, come along. I should probably change out of sweatpants. Literally, sweatpants is my entire life on these mom days. I don't mommy, wear anything else. I don't know why, just like getting out of sweatpants and into leggings and a sweatshirt feels like I'm doing something with my life, but it does, so we're not gonna change. This is what we're wearing today. <laughs> Tonight's dinner is brought to you by Annie's Mac and Cheese. Izzy is out um, on like a little work dinner. He's going to dinner with one of his customers and it's just me and the girls tonight. I've never filmed a nighttime routine video here, but I do on TikTok all the time. This is very typical other than the fact that Izzy's not here. And uh, really he does like 50% of the work. I'm just doing <laughs> all of it. I'm not super hungry. I'll probably snack after the girls go to bed, but like my appetite's been really weird lately. The girls, are asking for mac and cheese so we're gonna do this for them and yeah i've kind of got a lot of housework i also am going to do a little short q a at the end of this video i asked instagram for questions and we got some good ones so that's kind of what we have going on tonight Aaliyah, your sister's cleaning up the doctor toys you come clean up the number blocks okay i'm gonna change around the laundry real quick Hey, sit at the table. I'll bring you your guys' mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Yes, wait. Hey, I want it. I want it. Okay, let's try it. It's okay. The pink spoons are in the wash right now. If you've been following our split of domestic duties and parenting duties, um, Izzy and I kind of split everything up in the house 50-50. But it was all with the understanding that we could come back to the drawing board in a couple weeks if it seemed unfair. And I hate to be the person that says it was unfair. Um, he is in charge of sorting and washing and drying laundry, like literally just putting it in the washer and then putting it in the dryer. Um, and then I'm in charge of folding and putting away. And I was like, this takes significantly longer than 
him washing, drying, and sorting. So <laughs> I was like, no, we need to reorganize this. So we decided that I fold and put away the folded stuff and he has to hang everything that hangs in the closet because I hate that part. I don't mind putting away the folded stuff, but like the stuff that hangs, oh, I don't know why it's like, finding hangers like what size of hangers what type we have different types of hangers for pants versus tops and we don't have enough hangers for our clothes so like just that annoying headache I'm like no that that that's fine with me so that is kind of the update there and what we switched to but other than that it's been going so good the fact that we split everything and now I don't feel like crazy overwhelmed I mean obviously we help each other out here and there like tonight he is at this work dinner really, really late. So I'm gonna obviously unload the dishwasher cause he didn't this morning and do his duties, um, kind of step in for him. But like, that's marriage, that's life for you. So whatever. At least I'm not like chronically overwhelmed and like having a mental breakdown every single weekend. Cause that's how bad it was. Like staying on top of work and the house and parenting around the clock was just getting to me. So anyways. Here's how much the girls ate. Zamira cleaned out her bowl of the, uh, did barely touched anything. Um, but I'm gonna eat the rest of this. You okay with that? Yeah? Part of being a mom is just eating all of the leftovers. I don't know why I feel so guilty when we waste food. <laughs> Yummy. No yeah. talk, no talking. <laughs> that first. Annie's is really yummy. Don't talk, but you'll have food in your mouth. Yeah, you're right. You're so right. And to top off how Mommy, healthy... I just spit on this. That's okay. I'll put parchment paper on it. And to top off how healthy we're being tonight, we are making some Pillsbury cookies. Safe to eat. Yeah, you can have one that's not cooked. Wow! You can have one that's not cooked and one that is cooked, okay? And then after that, we're going to go... Why one? Then we're going to go... Because we have to save some for tomorrow. Oh, yeah. And even for Easter. Ooh. I'm going to have one raw one. Me too. Me mm. too. Yeah. So Delicioso. Okay. Alexa, set timer for 12 minutes. I think it was. Big, big, big no. Uh oh. Okay, when they cool off, you guys can have one. It's 8 17. The girls are yeah, usually yeah. in bed nice by 7. Stuff. Um, I just like, we got a really late start to the nighttime routine because Izzy Hello. and I had a call that we had to Hello. jump on at 6 30, 6 And then he left. So, yeah, it's a, it's, it's a late night. Like, mm. my patience is running low. They're really tired <laughs> and delirious. <laughs> um, they didn't nap today. They slept poorly last night. I'm just like hanging on uh, by a thread. She's kidding. I did a cat nap. You took a cat nap? Mom, no, I, you didn't. Yes, mom, I closed my eyes and then I opened it. Close and then open. This is what Zamira thinks is a cat nap. She took a cat nap. That's not what a cat nap is. <laughs> a cat nap is just a short nap, but you have to fall asleep. But I never fall asleep. Even at night time, I don't fall asleep. I just. <laughs> Stay awake until the morning, then and the and the afternoon. Wait, do I look like a cat? <laughs> yes. Meow. so flat over time like am i just buying the wrong pillows like does anybody have a link to like pillows that actually maintain their shape like what was this bought from dollarama i mean like some of ours do but like for the most part go put that on your pillow our pillow oh i love this age that the girls are they're so helpful and this is why i'm like so excited for the next baby we have because I genuinely feel like it will be so much easier because the girls just love helping. Like all of that laundry that I folded earlier, I just told the girls what drawer it went in 
in my room as well as their room and they put it all away and like sure probably not in the most organized fashion but next time i go to that drawer to like pull something out i'll quickly spend 10 seconds and just like reorganize it it's so helpful i didn't do any of that ta-da okay are you guys gonna come have a cookie cheers cheers give you guys your nighttime vitamin I've mentioned this on TikTok before, but I just give the girls magnesium gummies at night. I feel like everybody's diet is deficient in magnesium and bag up, girlfriend. I genuinely see a difference in the nights that I give them this. Like they just seem to fall asleep faster and stay asleep, especially. Daddy, we need some. I know, I need a charger toothbrush. I'll do that tonight. Bye. Okay, go E. 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 Biggie. Okay, meet me in your room. Lay down. Find your spot. Find your spot on the bed, please. Mama, Mama can sleep with the pillow. This, this one or this one? Let's start with breaths. Ready? No, just five. your hardest in claiming your prize. Such dreams await, Aaliyah, when you close your eyes. Reach even further and hold out your hand to those who at first you might not understand. Snuggle up, Aaliyah. No more lullabies. Big dreams await you when you close your eyes. Chick, chick, boom, boom. Will there be enough room? Here comes H up the coconut tree. Get, scat, scoodle, do. Flip, flop, flee. Everybody running up the coconut tree. Hug. I'll tell daddy, okay, that you want to play with you guys. Good night. So like I said, I asked on Instagram, I put a Q&A post up on Instagram and we've got lots of good questions. Um, let me pull it up real quick. I love doing Q&As. I just feel like when you're on several different platforms, like you start forgetting like what things you share where and Q&As just kind of clear the air. So if you're new here, hello. Um, comment on this video if I missed something that maybe you were curious about and maybe I'll do a dedicated Q&A video, but let's pull this up. Okay, yeah, so there are so many good ones. I'm gonna do all of this while I wash my face and get ready for bed because although I'll probably jump in the shower after this, I'm not a wash my face in the shower type girl. I always do it separate usually after the shower, but that's okay. Also, I worked with the brand Haru Haru, and I usually put cuffs on my wrists to wash my face anyways, but the ones I have are like really small. They sent me these really big ones, and I wish I could find them. There's like, the only name on them is Haru Haru Wonder, and that's the brand that I worked with, but they're so nice. Not one drop gets past that. First question, do you and Izzy ever fight? What does a disagreement look like? I love questions like this because like, yes, every couple fights and if not like fights, every couple argues and has disagreements. And I think that's very normal and healthy. I think if you're in a relationship where you're not disagreeing, you guys might be too content. Like you guys aren't growing together. I think disagreements, naturally just come with growth and change which again if like there's no change happening in your relationship at all it's probably not a good thing but i'm also no relationship expert by any means but as far as our relationship what does a disagreement like typically look like i'm gonna be honest i kind of have a rule with myself that if it's bothering me for over 24 hours um, then i bring it up i usually sit on things and i've just I used to be a really reactive person in the beginning of this relationship and that's just like a skill that therapy taught me like if you just sit on it wow I literally look scary right now if you just sit on it and not react and you just give yourself time to think if it's still bothering you after 24 hours chances are you should probably bring it up so it's usually me bringing things up or me confronting him being like hey I can sense that something's bothering you he's never been the one that's like too 
forthcoming about his feelings and emotions or I'm just like a perfect angel and he doesn't have any problems with me ever. I'm kidding. But with any disagreement, we, depending on like how big of a disagreement it is, might bring it up in front of the girls and just mention like, hey, that's bothering me. Sometimes we'll wait until they go to bed to bring things up. I don't know. It kind of just depends. But um, the one communication tool that we both love using actually there's two number one the story i'm telling myself is xyz so if he does something that bothers me i usually say the story i'm telling myself is that you let's say i had an issue with him being out tonight which i don't but i'm going to use it as an example the story i'm telling myself when you were out really really late with your customer is that you don't value the hard work that i put into our family and you just don't respect me and blah 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 I tell him what I'm telling myself, the little narrative in my head. I find that doing that, I'm like taking responsibility for the fact that I'm telling myself nonsense and I'm not like pointing the finger at him. But also it like allows him space to be like, oh, I see where you're coming from. Let me like clarify or give you further reassurance. The second communication tool that we love to use in disagreements is repeating back what we understand. I'm gonna actually use this one. I'm constantly going back and forth between these cleansers. I think I'm gonna go with Tatcha. They're both so good. I just genuinely can't decide sometimes. So if I did bring something up like that, using that same example, he might respond with, what I'm understanding is you're feeling a bit insecure about your duties within the home or what I'm understanding is XYZ. Maybe this isn't making any sense, but repeating back what you understood also just leaves tons of room for clearing up any like miscommunications or anything that might've gone wrong in the initial explanation. I find that those two things alone make it really easy to get through disagreements, but I will say like we've been together for six years. Like this did not happen overnight by any means and we, used to be really reactive. Like I, I, the beginning of a relationship was straight up toxic and never would I like condone a toxic relationship, but we've both put in a lot of work to get to where we are communication wise. And yeah, that's where I'm gonna leave that. Next question, someone said, do you plan on having any more kids? Love you. Um, love you too. I, yes, we want one more and we're pretty sure that our next is gonna be our last. And when I say pretty sure, I mean like 80% sure. If we decide to have a caboose baby down the road, you know, I'm talking more than five year age gap between our next baby and the last, then maybe we'll do it. But why is my face like extremely red right now? This is where the SOS spray comes in handy. I swear, any irritation, my eczema around my mouth, if it's flaring up, this stuff. Anyways, what I was saying is we want to conceive this year for our third and we may or may not have a fourth. There's also a part of me that's like, if I have three girls, like I am so blessed and that's just a sign from God, I'm done, I have three girls. So I don't know, I don't know, hard to say, but yes, we do want more kids. Words for someone who wants to start making videos for money but has no idea where to even start. Thank you in advance. Here's the thing, if you don't have a passion for like making videos or like, the creative aspect of content creation like if you don't want to learn how to create videos how to make them better how to you know get funky with editing and find kind of how you fit into the space you can't go in with the only goal being how can i make money before i even started i kind of had a passion for making videos every time we would go away on like a little staycation i would make like a weekend video all the little trips we went on they're all private on my youtube i don't share them publicly because they're just like really intimate moments in my life but that's kind of what led me to documenting my journey and like sharing vlog style what we do i already had that passion and monetizing has almost just been like a game and a big side effect of being passionate a about parenting and sharing and documenting my life and loving actual videography. I don't even know if you can call that content creation. I'm not a videographer by any means. If I were you, I would start, literally start, make one video, post it, make another video, post it, make another video, post it with the intention of making every next video a little better. And when I say better, I mean, especially if you're planning on starting on TikTok, like within your first 50 videos, one is bound to go viral and you just need to figure out what videos are performing well, what they had in common, what they didn't, like what you think people really gravitated to in that video and keep doing that. You almost have to like copy, paste, but tweak it a little. Copy, paste, and tweak it a little. Like you have to find what works and it is 
hard. For the first six months of content creation, I lived by the saying, six months of hard work doing anything can potentially change your life and it did yeah the best thing i could tell you is just to start like stop thinking about it and start make your first cringy video don't care what people think everybody is a little bit cringe when they start you know shooting for their dreams and actually making moves everybody goes through that phase oh it feels so it feels so good to wash my face i absolutely love the makeup brand merit but their lip oil i put it on my lips this morning and like my eczema all around my mouth is like crazy flared up and i think it's like the dye in this or something Ugh, i'm so mad at myself for doing it because it's happened before and i just don't learn my lesson i'm gonna go check on the girls and then we'll do a few more questions before i jump in the shower okay, they're perfectly asleep so we'll just continue on here what are your plans living situation wise after baby number three this is a really good question because like we live in a two bedroom two bath apartment um we're gonna upgrade in size to probably a townhome and that will most likely happen this year. Stay tuned. There's a lot of things that are going on right now that I haven't shared online because we're just not fully sure about what, what we're gonna do. It's a lot of stressful decisions being made behind the scenes, but I will share everything with you as soon as I can. What learning apps do your kids use when they have screen time? Free and specific, there's one called Poc Poc. My girls love it. It's like a Montessori app, low stimulation. Khan Academy love Khan Academy so much. I love that it also has like a video section. Such a good question because we just got rid of YouTube Kids probably 30, 45 days ago now. Like we don't let our kids watch YouTube Kids anymore. If they do, they watch it on our TV in the living room when we're present, but they were just like finding weird shows that I just wasn't a fan of them watching. Like older kids age seven and eight, like arguing, calling each other brats and stuff. And I just am not a big fan of my kids watching that stuff. They start picking up that behavior and bringing it into the house. And I just... I'm not a big fan, fan of it. So, Poc Poc, Khan Academy. We love Kidlo Land as well. We're subscribed to that. It has several games within it. Um, and the fourth one I'm gonna mention is only available in just the US. I don't know, PBS Kids. We have both the video, PBS Kids video, as well as PBS Kids games. Um, the girls love that, but we can't access it when we're in Canada, which sucks. It's just like a regional thing. Those are the four apps they use. They also love the calculator, like just the calculator on their iPad. Um, they both are really into math, so they'll ask us like, what's three plus three? And then they do it on their fingers and then do it on the actual calculator to see if they got it right. It's really cute. I don't know, it's random. My kids love a calculator. What made you start sharing on socials? I love your subjects, trauma, mental health, and momming. Um, whew, this is tough. So I didn't start my healing journey, consciousness journey, whatever you wanna call it, until I was pregnant with Zamira, like I just had this big breakthrough, if you will, a big experience happen where uh, this is so crazy. I was literally yelling at my husband and I had like this weird out of body experience. I was pregnant with Zamira at the time and I saw my mom yelling at my dad. Like I was my mom yelling at my dad. And then I saw the baby girl I was pregnant with yelling at her partner, like the visual of it. And I was like, that was so crazy. I can't believe I, I don't know if I thought it, but like the image was so clear. It was like a weird, 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 weird thing. Anyways, it was that moment that I was like, I've got to change. Like I've got to heal whatever traumas I have from my childhood and just my upbringing as a whole and whatever. And I don't know. I just think that from that moment on, I started sharing on Instagram, just my personal Instagram, what books I was reading and stuff. I started a blog. <laughs> A literal blog um, in 2019. I loved writing and loved sharing like pregnancy updates and like things that I was doing as a mom to be a bit more equipped as a gentle parent and I just like didn't really do well with that wasn't consistent and I guess when TikTok took off for me I was not planning on being vulnerable sharing parenting or mental health or trauma related topics but then I realized like that's what makes somebody behind the camera a real person versus just like an entertainment piece, right? There's a content creator and then there's an influencer and content creators can sit there and, you know, push products all day. You don't really know anything about them. It's very surface level. Then there's an influencer where you almost feel like you have a connection with. You almost trust them through the phone, which is really weird. Like you relate to them a little more. I found that when I started sharing parenting content, that's where I kind of found my people and found a big group of women that related to me. And yeah, it's just been so fun. So I don't know. I don't know what made me do it, but I shared one video and it did really well. And then I just kind of rode the wave from there. Where did you get the painted portraits of your babies? Um, 
This is so sad. I get this question so many times on TikTok. Um, my sister-in-law actually painted the pictures of my daughters in their bedroom. They are literally beautiful. She does not, she's not like an artist for a living. She doesn't sell her artwork, but she made it for their first and second birthdays. And yeah, I can't help there. It sucks because they're so beautiful and I post about them all the time. How do you move past your trauma slash triggers? I'm drowning in my past and how I was raised. Whew, that's heavy. Go to therapy. And I know that I, <laughs> I know some people have feelings about therapy, like it's not the end all be all, but I promise that working through your day to day and what you're struggling with, what you feel like you're drowning in, in your day to day, kind of connecting those dots back to your childhood and why you might be struggling, where you picked up those coping mechanisms. It's tremendously helpful. You can get to the root cause and kind of grieve the childhood that you wish you had. And I think grieving, feeling anger, crying over it, just like being able to express that emotion because as a child you weren't able to really helps you step into the now. Like let's focus on now what I can control. Let's focus on what I can do tomorrow to be better. How can I show up given my circumstances and stop feeling bad for myself? It all started in therapy for me. I mean, I did read tons of books and listen to tons of podcasts, but it was like therapy that made the crazy difference. And I only attended for five months. I just had a crazy good therapist. Did you sleep train your girls? No, I kind of did the pause method where we would say, I'm leaving, leave the room. And if she fussed, we would kind of just wait by the door for five minutes before going back in. If she full blown cried, we never left the room. But like, you know, when a kid's whiny tired and they kind of just like mm, fuss and not like full blown cry, I could never do cry it out. But we are considering with our next sleep training, not with cry it out, but like being there in the room, putting our hand on them, being able to nurture them, not actually picking them up when they're crying, fussing, but like being there and just kind of understanding that like kids need to learn how to put themselves to sleep. That is a skill. I'm not saying self-soothe. I think that self-soothing is a developmental thing. Okay, don't hear what I'm not saying in all of this. I'd never let my kid cry it out. But I think that if all of their other needs are met, they need me to sit with them in the discomfort of being so tired and needing to fall asleep but not knowing how i could sit there with my hand on them rub their back soothe them while they fall asleep in their crib but just not pick them up um i'll probably do that when our next baby whenever we have it is six to eight months old i kick myself for not doing that with Aaliyah. i was like so against sleep training and i've learned so much about it in the last like year and a half because i've had lots of friends have babies that did it and I would have saved myself a lot of the postpartum depression and anxiety that I went through. I swear the main reason why I went through the chaos of it was because I was sleep deprived. I was waking up every two hours to feed her. Every two hours for 18 months of my life. Like I was in the slumps. So yeah, we'll definitely be doing things different the next time around. And there are a few other ones that are so good, but it would take me all night to get into like your life as a Mormon and how you felt after you left it. And did you ever deal with mom rage? How did you fix it? There's, we're not gonna get into those tonight because we'll be here all night. I am gonna go get in the shower and then pull out my book. I don't know if I mentioned this in the last vlog, but I'm reading Akotar and uh, I don't know. I just haven't got into it yet. Like I'm trying so hard to get into it. I'm like on chapter eight to be specific. My sister's reading it at the same time as I am and she's on chapter 27 or something. She told me, rest assured, it gets better. So I'm trying my hardest to just like push through it, but I'd love to get into this because I don't have anything to do. Like Izzy's literally at work still. And like normally I would stay up having deep conversations with him because he's not here. I get to read myself to sleep. That's exciting. That doesn't happen often.